Hello viewers and a very warm welcome. You're watching the brand new edition of India Fights Back with your host Kriti Mishra. The liberalized pricing and accelerated national COVID-19 vaccination strategy has been implemented from 1st of May 2021. As part of the strategy, in every month, 50% of the total central drugs lab cleared vaccine doses would be procured by Government of India and it would continue to make it available to the state governments totally free of cost as was being done earlier. In addition to this, every month, balanced 50% of the CDL cleared vaccine doses would be available for direct procurement by state governments and private hospitals. To augment the capacity of indigenous production of co-vaccine under the mission, the Department of Biotechnology, Government of India, in April 2021, provided financial support as grant to vaccine manufacturing facilities for enhanced production capacities. Vaccination is an integral pillar of the comprehensive strategy of Government of India for containment and management of the pandemic, along with test, track, treat, and COVID appropriate behavior. And to analyze the efforts to boost vaccine production, I'm joined by eminent guests on the panel today. Joining me on the program, Dr. Rohit Sareen, former director, National Institute of Tuberculosis and Respiratory Diseases, and Dr. Y.K. Gupta, member, National Expert Group on Vaccine Administration for COVID-19. Welcome to Prat Sabha Television, gentlemen. And Dr. Gupta, coming to you first, as per information received from vaccine manufacturers, a total of 4 crore, 87 lakh and 55,000 doses will be available till end of June 2021 for direct procurement by the states and the UTs. Your assessment of India's vaccination drive, which of course is world's largest vaccination drive, sir. I, I must compliment uh, our scientists and our pharmaceutical companies and those who are involved in making vaccines in India. The, this is the world's largest vaccination program. And the government of India under Suraksha COVID Suraksha Mission, Department of Biotechnology, under financing from the BIREC, is now encouraging several PSUs, public sector undertaking, to make vaccines. And the technology transfer will be done by Bharat Biotech, which is uh, in collaboration with Indian Council of Medical Research. And what uh, we expect is in next four to five months, at least a few organization like uh, which has been Hafkins Institute of, uh, of Biopharmaceutical Corporation, which is in Mumbai. And this has been given a grant of 65 crore rupees and this will make 20 million doses per month. And similarly, the Indian Immunological Limited, which is in Hyderabad, which is uh, has also been given grant, and this will produce uh, about uh, uh, one million to ten million doses uh, per month. And uh, the another is Bibcol, Bharat uh, Immunological and Biological Limited, which is a PSU under Department of Biotechnology has also been given a grant which will manufacture about one crore doses. And similarly, Gujarat Biotechnology Research Center, which will also make the vaccine. So if you just see, and the government is also encouraging if there are other private players who are interested in making vaccine, so there would be easy technology transfer and there would be funding for making them in addition in addition that uh, we will have a good supply of Sputnik which is coming from Russia that will also increase the amount of uh, the number of the vaccine which will be available. So we hope that we will not only meet the requirement, uh, uh, sufficient requirement of our country, but we maybe we may have uh, some surplus and uh, it is also being encouraged that the academic institution should also play important role in days to come in research and development for vaccine. And because vaccine platform is, is important to have so that if at all we require in future vaccine of different nature, 
this may take the much shorter time. So that is, I think, a very good development which uh, we are uh, doing in in the framework of uh, uh, COVID suraksha or vaccine development in India. Absolutely, sir. That's a very comprehensive reply you've given as far as our efforts are concerned to ramp up production of the vaccines in India. But since you were talking about transfer of technology, Dr. Sari, we have to understand that complex technologies cannot be transferred just like that. It takes about 70 to 75 days for vaccine to be manufactured. What kind of capacities do we need if we have to enhance our production further? Well, I think it's quite obvious that, uh, uh, you see, a complex thing like a vaccine, to retain its efficacy, to retain its uh, limited side effect profile has to be manufactured in a manner that, uh, uh, you know, goes along with the parent concerns manufacturing process. So hence, so we cannot really, uh, you see, grant uh, licenses to manufacture to any pharmaceutical company. It, it has to follow certain stringent guidelines uh, which are laid down for vaccine manufacture. You see, and then when we are talking of vaccines for virus uh, diseases, it's important that the type of laboratory which is there should be a minimal BSL-3 level. By that we mean, you see, the biosafety of that laboratory should be such that it should be able to not only manufacture, but also uh, sort of uh, ensure that the people working with the vaccine uh, or with the virus do not uh, uh, really get harmed. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we don't want a situation where we say that, yes, in the whole process, virus has leaked out of a particular laboratory and has spread out uh, the disease further, as was being, you know, thought of in the earlier days of this particular pandemic. So, uh, uh, you know, the whole process is very tedious, it is time consuming and one cannot expect that, uh, yes, we will have it the next week. We will have it after a few months, that also if everything goes well. However, I would also like to add here that, uh, you see, in the effort to ramp up the supply of vaccine in the country, the government has encouraged, uh, you see, the uh, other uh, vaccines which have uh, at least got the approval from uh, uh, certain organizations, whether it is the US FDA or whether it is the European Union or whether it is the Japanese vaccine, so that, uh, uh, you know, they can be fast-tracked into use in the country. So I think that's again a very important thing and maybe somewhere down the line we will have a whole uh, gamut of vaccines available to us. It will not be limited to just the Covishield or the Covaxin, but it will be uh, uh, really a whole menu from where uh, you see the individuals will have a choice which one to take. Yes, today, we, you know, we are having some uh, difficulty in the supply, though the intention is very clear that all those who need it should get it. And when we started, we started with 45 years plus, then with comorbidities, and earlier we started with 60 plus, and now we are talking of 18 years plus, you see. Uh, but uh, to take care of such large populations, even though, even though we have infrastructure of a health system there, but availability of the product also has to be there. And, uh, uh, you know, in the earlier days, uh, the people were a bit hesitant to take on the vaccine. But today, that is not the scenario. Today, you will find vaccine centers are flooded. And if one wants to really register oneself on the vaccine portal, sometimes even that becomes difficult. Because, you see, there are so many people who want to register themselves today. So there is a huge demand now for the vaccine and uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, in, in the coming weeks and months, uh, we will ramp up our capacities to the extent to meet this particular demand. Thank you. So you made a very important point, Dr. Serene, about availability of the raw materials and the products. 
Dr. Gupta, there is a proposal in India. Uh, India has been pushing it on waiver of certain TRIPS provisions to increase global vaccine production. So certainly this is a very important move in order to take on the challenge of vaccinating the poorest of the poor and save lives. I think that's very important that uh, I, it is very important that we are not restricted to cities. We reach out to the villages, we reach out to the poor and therefore the affordability is important. Why it is important to have a global effort is also because there is a mutation issue. And if the mutation issue is at one place, and therefore it, it is a platform, it is a collaboration, a consortium of vaccine makers in from the different part of the world, I think this issue can be handled better way. And that is why the proposal of, uh, of Indian government talking to US trips and maybe the other um, uh, organizations so that these uh, what are called the trade barriers do not uh, become a restrictive for making the vaccine available at an affordable cost and reaching to the masses here. And as uh, Dr. Sareen very rightly said that in India, if you just say 18 plus, I think it is a huge population and uh, it, it will require the vaccine and the second booster dose and the best thing today which has happened, the initial vaccine hesitancy has now gone. Now everybody is now willing and keen to get the vaccine as early as possible. <clears throat> and therefore we have to be ready and we are getting ready for it. So you made a very important point about restrictive trade practices. Dr. Serene, how do we ensure that supply chains for the vaccine manufacturers be kept open and unbridled as the entire world is in dire need of vaccines? No, I think the first and foremost thing is the realization that it is a, a global effort which is required. It is no longer a country effort alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, at the global level, I think a realization is there amongst uh, the developed world also. We uh, learn that even in the US, uh, the parliament there itself is also you know, mm -hmm. contemplating and uh, in, in fact, uh, uh, you know, more or less had taken a call on this that, yes, we mm -hmm. will have to remove these restrictions as far as, uh, you know, the movement of the vaccine across nations is concerned. And uh, it is not only the physical movement of the vaccine, but the knowledge and the technology which goes with it, which also moves. Now, India, uh, uh, you know, by and large, is one of the largest vaccine manufacturers in the world. You know, if, if, we, if we look at it in terms of our vaccine industry. And uh, definitely, if, uh, uh, you know, there is a technology transfer, it would be simpler for the entire vaccine to be made in India, uh, even though the, uh, you know, the originators of the vaccine were uh, different. So, uh, 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 so to say, the removal of patents is uh, being thought of. And uh, uh, I think everyone is uh, taking these things very seriously and is uh, working towards ensuring that somehow or the other we bring an end to this pandemic. You know, it is a collective effort and uh, it's a global collective effort. And we find all international organizations, whether it is the WHO or whether it is other organizations, they are all uh, uh, moving in that same direction that, yes, make it as a global emergency and deal with it accordingly. It is a global emergency. And before we talk about our vaccine basket, Dr. Gupta, I'd just like to elicit your view on the impact of transfer of technology. And as a matter of fact, that India has already said that this is not the time for vaccine nationalism. Your take, sir. I think transfer of technology is, is a very critical thing. And I must say, and I, I will elaborate what uh, Dr. Sareen said, that uh, these things, these vaccines, is a very specialized, highly uh, important issue. And not all the pharmaceutical companies can make it. You have to have a complete biosafety level, which is called as a BSL-3 level. And that's why the companies which I named, they have already some infrastructure. For example, Bipcol has been making vaccine for polio for many, many years now. So they have 
majority of these institutions, Hopkins, Bibcall, and uh, the other institutions, they have basic framework existing, and that is why they have been preferred, and they have come forward. So, with the minimum support of uh, of uh, uh, finances, the technology transfer would be easily possible. So, it may not take that long, which we expect, because they have already the basic level of understanding of vaccine production exists there. But of course, it is not that you switch on and off and then uh, this technology transfer will, uh, will instantly take place. It will certainly require some time. And that's why the estimate is between six months, three months to six months, we will have a reasonably good amount of production which will meet our requirement. We'll have a reasonable amount of production, as you're saying. But Dr. Sareen, as far as vaccine production is concerned, we understand that central government has already rendered financial support to various public sector players to boost the vaccine production capacity. What more needs to be done, sir? Uh, you see, it is not only the government of India which is taking this initiative, but you will <clears throat> find that the state governments also are joining hands, you know. So, uh, as uh, uh, Dr. Gupta just, uh, you know, alluded to, that, uh, well, the uh, uh, state counterparts would uh, contribute, uh, say, about 50% of the uh, vaccine requirement of that particular state. So, uh, it is a joint effort of the uh, central government and the state governments to ensure that uh, their... Uh, entire population which requires the vaccination has the vaccine available to them. In addition, government of India is also financially supporting, you see, the vaccine uh, manufacturers. Uh, Dr. Gupta has named some of them. But yes, the support is going into in a much larger way uh, to ramp up, uh, uh, you see, the production capacity also. Uh, you know, uh, there, there may be facilities within country which can manufacture up to a particular extent. But if we need 10 times their manufacturing capacity, definitely they need to ramp up their infrastructure and government of India is coming out and supporting them as grant and aid. You know, now this is again, it, it is not a loan which the government is giving. It is grant and aid which the government is giving to these institutions to help them to increase their vaccine manufacturing capacity. So uh, uh, I would put it that, uh, yes, all efforts, government of India, state governments, public sector undertakings, private sector, everyone is really joining hands. And uh, 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 But of course, it is something which will take its time. You know, it, uh, it uh, requires a lot of planning. Yes. And in the whole planning process, you see, we also have to make sure that the wastage of this vaccine is minimized. You see, that's again a planning process because uh, in the initial stages of the vaccine program, we found that a large proportion of the vaccine, nearly about 8 to 10 percent, was getting wasted. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see that, you know, it, that it should be utilized in a manner that wasting should be minimal. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you see, there are different things which are happening in the country, which will ensure that whatever we are manufacturing should be sufficient mm -hmm. for whatever we require. So, wastage, reduction in, in uh, this wastage of vaccine, that's a very important component. Dr. Gupta, what is your take? What is your advice to the states and to uh, the people who are handling the vaccines about the wastage part of it? I would say that uh, when the country needs vaccine, when each and every dose is important, now when the vaccine hesitancy has gone, the wastage has automatically come down. But even a single dose going waste is, is not correct. And that must be prevented. So optimum utilization of vaccine, the prevention of the wastage can happen because of the appropriate transport there should not be any wastage in that when you use a oil it is a multi dose oil so if there are not uh, adequate number of uh, uh, the volunteers or the subjects 
I think that again is important thing. And keeping the, the leftover or maybe the oil in appropriate temperature is also important. And these are the some basic steps where the wastage can be prevented. And if you just do not have an idea that how much vaccine will be required in next 15 days, and you get a vaccine which is of the three or four times more quantity, which may um, may not be stored properly. And these type of the common practices, which are good storage practices, good transport practices, and good vaccination practices, which are called as, if we follow them, then the wastage will be negligible. And we have to ensure that our wastage is uh, negligible. And talking about uh, the was, vaccine, I, no wastage, no wastage, absolutely, sir, no wastage. That's the point that we have to reinforce. And Dr. Sareen, uh, as you were talking about the states and several states have floated global tenders. We understand that India is augmenting the basket of vaccines available for fighting the pandemic, to accelerate the pace and coverage of vaccination program. Going ahead, sir, what is your assessment of our manufacturing capacity and total vaccine availability for domestic consumption? Well, as I said, it's a process and uh, we uh, it would be wishful thinking if I would say that, OK, from next week onwards, I should have sufficient. We don't really have that. In fact, uh, certain states are now reprioritizing the age group to 45 plus just because they don't have sufficient for the 18 plus age group. You know, then again, uh, uh, prioritization is happening towards the second dose. Those who have already received the first dose should receive the second dose, which is very important to get the best efficacy of that particular intervention. So, uh, uh, you know, government is already aware that it is going to take time. And, uh, uh, you know, how much time it is difficult to say, but yes, uh, uh, somewhere about uh, September plus it will take so that at least the vaccine would be available to all those whom we feel need the vaccine at this particular stage. At the same time, research is also going on for uh, children and uh, maybe 12 to 18 years would also adolescent age group would also come into the picture somewhere after that so that, uh, uh, you see, by and large, we have... Uh, uh, most of the population covered and uh, that would generate sufficient herd immunity to uh, really, you know, take care of future transmissions and transmission risks uh, as far as the virus is concerned. Dr. Gupta, do you agree with him? Of, co of course, I think there is a no point of disagreement in this. We have to make our country well, well very well prepared. And uh, this, this is not, as I said in the beginning, this is not a switch on of phenomena. It will take some time. And, uh, and uh, also that is what we call as a science driven optimization of the duration between the first dose and the second dose. And uh, initially it was six to eight weeks. Then we made it to 12 weeks and now 12 to 16 weeks. And that is because what has been seen that the better protection is seen when the duration between the two is between six for, uh, is about 12 weeks. Yes. So this is, uh, and more importantly, we have learned during this process two important things. One is the science, how science can be, can be faster for development of the drug or vaccine how the regulations can be made um, comfortable, means uh, safe, yet faster. And also, this has told good management practices. I think the entire, as I said, the world's largest vaccination drive requires uh, from mega planning to micro planning. I think that is uh, what we have a, a, a good outcome of uh, this, uh, I would say, blessing in disguise. So from mega planning to micromanagement, that's what our vaccination strategy is all about. But time for closing comments from both my guests. Dr. Sareen, India's approach has been built on scientific pillar, guided by global best practices, SOPs of the WHO. So your closing comments. 
Well, I would say that uh, we are looking forward to uh, a mo much more happier situation than what we are today, uh, provided that all of us continue to fight this pandemic together. That's very important. And, uh, you know, we should uh, uh, rest aside uh, all the uh, controversial issues and uh, really adopt uh, whatever is being offered by our scientific community as the way forward. And I'd also like to add here something that uh, uh, you see knowledge is ever growing and ever changing. So like uh, we have changed the duration between the two doses, similarly, as we learn more, other newer things may also come up. Other new medications may come up. We are, as on date, working with a very open mind. And I am sure that... Uh, uh, we will be able to conquer this particular pandemic. Dr. Gupta, we'll be able to conquer this pandemic. Your closing comments. I, I would say three points. This corona is a relatively very young organism. It is hardly two years old. So it takes years to understand. Yes. Yet, every day science is unfolding. And therefore, the policy, the decision, the drugs will change. Therefore, public should not get panic with the changing concept because that evolves. So that is one thing. The second thing is we must, through you or through any other media, must communicate to our citizens that vaccination is very important. No vaccine hesitancy. Third thing is basic preventive measure, what all of us have been talking, mask, distance, don't unnecessarily go here and there. They will remain the backbone of uh, conquering this. This particular pandemic. Of course, uh, on our show, we've been reiterating to follow the COVID appropriate behavior and vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. Well, that's all we had for you in this edition of India Fights Back. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Sareen and Dr. Gupta as well. Sure. But before we leave, let me remind you once again to stay safe from the coronavirus pandemic. Remember to wear a face mask and wash your hands and face regularly and ensure that you maintain physical distancing whenever you're stepping outside. Well, these simple precautions are all it takes to defeat the pandemic. Take very good care and goodbye.